Hey guys, I'm very excited to be back again today with Titania from A Midsummer Night's Dream. Yes, indeedy, I am doing a few videos on Titania today, so I'm going to link them below. So I am looked at Set Your Heart at Rest, The Fairyland by It's Not the Child of Me. That will be in one of the other videos. And I'm also going to look at These Are the Forgeries of Jealousy. And that's the one I'm going to look at right now, in fact. I will do a character analysis video as well for Titania, so I'll link that below as well if you want to just get an oversight of Titania if you're thinking about doing her for an audition or a scene or maybe you're doing a full play and you want to just get some ideas to start you off. Um, so have a look at that if you want more of an overview and now I'm going to specifically go into the meanings and how to approach these other forgeries of jealousy. Uh, the monologue, the monologue, um, because there are some, some specific things that you're going to need to think about in this one. This is a slightly longer monologue. You could cut it down for sure if you need to, um, but particularly you're going to need to have a think about how you're going to get variety because it's kind of all in the same vein. It's very descriptive. Um, so you're going to need to make sure that the audience is not just kind of getting a sense of you going, I'm describing a thing. Right? We don't want that in Shakespeare, we want specific. So, let's have a look. What is she talking about? In this scene, she is talking about how she and Oberon keep having fights and is stuffing up the seasons, specifically. And it really, this is where we start to see uh, what this world of A Midsummer Night's Dream, um, how it exists, how the realities of it. So in A Midsummer Night's Dream, there are fairies. Uh, which you probably know, I'm just talking about from the audience pers perspective, when they're hearing this stuff, they're going, ah, okay, so in this world there are fairies and they have to kind of interact with the forces of nature and if they don't do certain things um, as fairies, like go and do little songs and circles and, um, you know, talk to the wind, then the wind will get mad. That's kind of what goes on in this monologue and it sets it up for the audience so they're getting, oh, okay, I get it. That's why everything seems kind of weird in this in this play, everything's a little bit ajar when the play first starts. So it's actually quite important in setting up context. And we've just basically started the scene in terms of Oberon uh, and has entered and Titania, um, there's Titania and Pac and all those fairies and Titania's gone, oh, I know where you've been, like, what are you doing here? And I know where you've been, you've been off with that hussy. And he's like, well, what, you can talk, you've been off with so-and-so. That's basically what's just happened, which is probably true. They probably have been off <laughs> sleeping with different people because they're quite sexual. Um, their sexual beings are very powerful, the fairies. Um, so definitely I would personally, and I'll look at this in the character analysis video, um, you need to have a, a sense of sexuality in, in the playing of it. Not necessarily in this monologue, but just generally with Titania. So these are the forgeries of jealousy is a response to Oberon saying, well, what about you? How can you even bring up that I've been with so-and-so when you were with so-and-so? And she's like, no, you're, that's just your jealous mind making that up. That's what that means. These are the forgeries of jealousy. And never since the middle summer spring met we on hill in dale, forest or mead by paved fountain or by rushy brook or in the beached margin of the sea to dance our ringlets to the whistling wind but with thy brawls thou hast disturbed our sport now that is all kind of one now don't obviously don't perform it the way that i'm reading it i'm clearly just reading you're going to bring a lot more to it what she's saying in that big beat there is that basically since the start of midsummer we um we being the fairies and her and her fairies have not been able to meet anywhere around about all the little places that they like to go and play and sing and dance, have not been able to go and hang out anywhere without Oberon turning up and bothering them. And because he's turning up and bothering them, therefore the wind, she goes on, piping to us in vain, as in revenge have sucked up from the sea contagious fogs, which falling on the land have every pelting river made so proud that they have overborne their continents. So I'll break down the imagery, but what she's saying overall is because you come and keep bothering me and my fairies, we can't talk to nature and commune with the wind. And now the wind is annoyed at us. And because the wind is annoyed at us, the wind is, so piping us to us in vain means like whistling to us and trying to talk to us and we're not listening. Um, as in revenge has sucked up from the, th the wind has been mad and sucked up um, 
contagious fogs that they <laughs> interestingly in Shakespeare's day they did have certain ideas about what made you sick and sometimes it's like you know humidity being outside at night and things like that um, but also I think she plays on a lot of that all that kind of stuff that she's really playing um, throughout this more long and going like it's making people sick and um, in this case the wind has sucked up fog and because the fog's gone on the land um, every pelting river made so proud meaning like the rivers have gotten bigger that they have overborne their continents means there's been flooding right are you with me i hope so so next the ox hath therefore stretched his yoke in vain the plowman lost his sweat and the green corn hath rotted ere his youth attained a beard so that's all basically meaning that the um the farmers and the ox and everything they've all been working hard for no reason because they were plowing their fields and planting corn and stuff like that but the floods came and buggered everything up um green corn is rotted airy so you've attained to be as just like the corn it's just, just referring to the corn beard like so basically things aren't ripening the fold stands empty in the drowned field and crowds are fatted with the murray and flock so that's really, this is starting to, and I'll just dig in for a second about the imagery here. Because these are starting to get really kind of ugh, yucky images that she's trying to, she's painting a picture, which is very interesting for the play as a whole. She's painting a picture of things not being right in the world. And that should be apparent if you're doing the whole play, that should be apparent uh, from the, from the get-go, that things are a little bit, bit out of balance. So she's saying... For example, um, the fold stands empty in the drown and field being like there's the sheep are dying and the fields are empty and that kind of thing. Um, and crows are fatted with a Murray and flock, Murray and flock being like the sheep that are poisoned are dying or cattle as well. So any, any sort of flock that's filled with, um, they've got their disease because there's been floods and they're sick and rah, 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 and then the crows are eating the sick um, dead animals sorry so that's what's happening there so before I go on to the rest of it because there's quite a lot in this monologue let me just clarify how you might need to think about your approach your acting approach these are very descriptive and you need to connect to description if you just start describing and then there are crows and then there's this the audience will lose you so what you need to do is really dig into the senses uh, get in your mind's eye go through each line and have a really clear image in your head of what that looks like so that might be a bird pecking on a dead animal or something like that because as soon as i say that and i've got a clear image of my head where is it what does it look like how big is it is that everywhere you know is it what's the weather like all that kind of thing bring make the image really really detailed and rich the more you dig into those images the more you're going to start to connect naturally to it because if i start to imagine a bird pecking at a diseased dead animal that makes me start to feel oh you know yuck and that connection if you let yourself access it is what's going to make the monologue powerful and interesting to watch. And the next step on that is to think about how does Titania feel about that? I personally think that she's quite a, she has a lot of feelings. She actually feels she's quite sensitive. And so when she's talking about these things, I think there's probably a sense of disgust or disgust or frustration um, or pity for the mortals and that kind of thing so once you've built your very clear imagery and you've let yourself kind of connect to it you also need to start to think in your analysis of the monologue how do I feel about this when I say these words when I describe this image how do I feel and that will color what you're doing you might naturally as a person start to connect to the emotions but you've also got to put your Titania hat on and go well how do I think Titania feels when she describes it do you think she's she has pity for mortals do you think she is just kind of like this is ridiculous it's your choice but you should make the decision okay so going on to pretty much the second half of the monologue it actually just continues really because she's starting to 
build. You're going to have to make sure that you're building it because there's different, she's going to need to feel differently about different things. And that's how you're going to get your variety is to think, well, how do I feel about this? I might feel like disgust or um, frustration about the, you know, crow and the dead body. But I also might, when I go to the next bit, she says, the, nines, the nine men's Morris is filled up with mud and the quaint mazes in the wanton green for lack of tread are undistinguishable. And that's, the nine men's Morris is like a game um, that they used to like put in the mud and it's the same. And the quaint mazes in the wanton green, it's like they used to sort of trace mazes in, in the fields and stuff like that. And basically it means that stuff is referring to there being like no games and stuff and no play. Um, people probably going inside a bit more and I think because they're very playful that'd be interesting for her to be maybe more frustrated about that or angry or maybe it's pity so building in some different reactions about different things because they are they are all kind of different things so and just to quickly recap she starts by talking about the winds and that's all kind of nature and that might make her feel guilty that she hasn't been able to talk to nature then she starts talking about things dying and that might make her feel disgust for example and then she talks about there's not things that people can play with and that might make her feel pity or frustration so you can see how she's kind of moving her focus around and that you can choose how you respond to it and that will give you variety okay Whew right it's actually quite big you need to really break it down bit by bit the human mortals want their winter cheer no night is now with him or carol blessed and so when she says the human mortals want their winter cheer it doesn't mean they want winter cheer it means they're lacking it so like when something's found wanting that they're lacking something so the human mortals are lacking winter cheer because there's no caroling or stuff like that Therefore, the moon, the governess of floods, pale in her anger, washes all the air that rheumatic diseases do abound. So again, we're kind of referring to, and here, what's interesting is she's starting to paint the picture of how, again, it's relating from mortals to, um, to natural forces. And, and again, and another one where it's like, you know, because the moon is putting, you know, making the air foggy again because the governess of floods are meaning that she's kind of making the water go everywhere and there's water in the air and everything's foggy and misty and people are getting sick and thorough this distemperature we see the seasons alter so this is where it starts to really she's really packing it she's pushing the um the her point home thorough this distemperature we see the seasons alter hoary headed frosts fall in the fresh lap of the crimson rose so that she's doing some image comparison there so this and this you know hoary headed frost being like um cold i think it's usually leaves um fall in the fresh lap of the crimson rose so that kind of feeling of winter versus spring and an old and i actually don't know how to pronounce this i think an un and high and high i think thin and icy crowned he's like the winter king kind of thing an odorous chaplet of sweet summer beads is as in mockery set so in so again comparing a winter thing thin and icy crown so imagining there's some ice for example an odorous chaplet of sweet summer buds is is as in mo mockery set so there's like frost but then there's like summer flowers on it so again she's like comparing these different things and going like this is all mixed up but all the all the seasons have gotten mixed up the spring the summer the chart the this says childing the childing autumn Angry winter change their wanted li wanted liveries, and the mazed world by their increase increase now knows not which is which. So basically, summing up everything she just said, um, change their wanted liveries mean livery is like um, a servant's uniform, or so, basically a uniform. So she's saying that all the seasons have changed what they look like, and now that this is happening, the mazed world, being like everybody but mortals as well, is completely confused about what's going on. So big setup of what's happening in the world. And finally, really rams at home. And this same progeny of evils comes from our debate, from our dissension. We are their parents and originals. So she's saying it is our fault that this is happening because we keep fighting. You keep interrupting our revels and our rituals. And this is what's happening to everyone. So that is quite a heart 
heartbreaking thing in a way because I can imagine that Titania would probably feel a bit more guilty about it than Oberon does. Oberon tends to be a bit of a blockhead and not really have as many feelings generally. So that is a massive, massive monologue and it needs to be paced. So as I mentioned, <coughs> excuse me, that's as I mentioned before, you need your homework is to do the imagery work, to drop into it, to make sure it's clear in your head. What does it feel like? What does it look like? What does it smell like? When you're imagining these fields and ice, icicles and buds and all that kind of thing, what does that conjure up for you? Think about your focal points to make sure that when you're describing something, you might actually want to imagine that the field is just over there, or maybe you're imagining that it's the horizon but make sure you think about where you're directing it to and when you're referring to something, like where is the moon, for example, is a really good one to think about. It's amazing how often when we're like, I'm describing something, we end up not being really clear about where that thing is. Is it in my mind? Is it literally over there? That kind of thing. You can pace this up. It does not need to go fast. It's a quite a stately monologue because it's descriptive and you need to let the descriptions arrive let the images arrive in the audience's mind so you do have time to breathe through it and go and go and go but to make that variety make sure you understand how she feels about each different thing that she said and that's it goodness gracious me it it's a big one but it can be really beautiful once you've done the work it's very achievable even if you are new to shakespeare so uh that's it for today. Please uh, like the video if you found it helpful, subscribe or comment. This is really helpful in me getting the videos out to more people and helping more people. Uh, and let me know, of course, if there's a monologue that you'd like me to dig into. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.